Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris Ormy. Welcome, one and all. We're back here with the uh, update of Season 7 of the Swansea City Save that was streamed live on Twitch TV. Now, this save ran for eight years, getting out of the championship, rebuilding the side, trying to get up into the Premier League and make an impact. Uh, where we left off, we had done some really good things uh, in Season 6. We finally won the league. We managed to uh, we managed to win the Champions League. Uh, in fact, I think the only thing we didn't win might have been the FA Cup in Season 6. So we were coming towards the end of the save then. We'd hit our main objective, which is turn us into a European powerhouse. We in it way before I thought we would. And we'd started making some signings, which are pushing us in that right direction. So this season was about big sort of condol consolidations um trying to defend our european crown and see how much more life this save really had so we still hadn't won um the community shield super cup world club cup i think those are the big trophies left to win in a poll i was asked you know i asked a bunch of questions i was asked to go and win every trophy possible with this club i was asked to try and get a son and try and get a stadium named after me as well in this save but i knew that they were kind of secondary objectives but that was our main sort of thing left to achieve so we'll start with the transfers season seven um some young players nobody really big until we come down to alexander and reich so we'd signed them as a young player wait that he was 18 to join us like i say this is uh two seasons in from the point yeah, this is about two seasons in from when he joined us. Uh, but 26 months, all in all. An absolutely fantastic central defender. A big sort of player at the back who can do some damage for us. Love seeing him uh, in the team. Love seeing what he can do. It's another good German youngster. We've had quite a few of those. But a lot of money for a young player. But I knew he'd develop into a good player. We've seen exactly sort of how he looked as a teenager. We knew we were pretty safe with the kind of player we we're getting. Six foot four, big, tall, strong, good in the air, good on the ground, solid mentals. He's really developed into a world class centre back. So I'm really enjoying having him in the club. And um, that was big. Uh, apart from that, again, more reserve players until you get down to the big signing that we were waiting on, which was 92 million for Donnarumma. Best young goalkeeper in the game. Best keeper in the game at this point. Um, yeah, well worth the money. Would have paid more. Almost did pay more. Um, and at this stage, he is just unbelievable for us. Um, but yeah, this was the first time that we really put money out there for a player. And it was big money. The first time we really went above and beyond for a player. So yeah yeah like I, I knew it would pay off i thought it might be a bit risky at times but i knew it would probably pay off you're getting a world-class player worst case scenario you sell him for a little bit less than you bought him it's not a huge loss if that happens but overall i really did feel comfortable with donnarumma from there we went and got some more youngsters again zaferovic decent backup defender um Love having him about as well. Really good young defender. Godsef in midfield from our feeder club. Rotation player. Pretty decent. Ended up selling him on for a big profit, as you can see. Um, didn't have that top-end quality we were really looking for. But a good player. And then transfer listed. I didn't want to buy a player. But transfer listed Phil Foden. you got to be kidding me. There's no way I'm passing that up. Another 51 million out. Donnarumma for big money. Phil Foden for decent money. Couldn't help myself. Uh, it took some time to get him settled. It took some time to figure out what his best role, duty, position, and all that was. We do have it solved now. Um, so, really glad to see that happen. Um, but he hadn't won a cap for England before he joined us. He's now up there, like two years later. 25 caps, 7 goals. Starting his career well. 26 years of age. He's now a firm fixture in that team. But, um, yeah, a bit frustrating at the start, but Foden came 
good. Uh, Tzatzikis, good attacking midfield player. Sort of have him sort of play now and again off the bench. Um, good potential. Didn't really make it at the club, but I was excited for him. And a lot of backups, really, and young players. Uh, Chan Joseph, a young English midfielder. Spent some money on him. Spent some money on him. Okay, it was a decent amount of money. But, again, he was English, young, high potential, had good stats, and I thought I could grow him into a first-team player. So I envisioned having more English players, more British players in the team. Now, we've had that in part, but it was time to introduce more. Fordham was a good part of that. Joseph coming in is another part, and the next guy as well. Uh, Derek Herbert is another part. So $35 million for Joseph, and then $26 million for Herbert, who turned out to be the absolute steal of the bunch. Mayhem personified goals. He was my third-choice striker in this season. In the next season, you'll see in video 8 uh, for the Season 8 update, you'll see him there, and um, he has a much bigger impact. He's in the first team, in fact, for that part. So, a little bit of change up front. Kula Muratovic days slowly coming to an end at the club, sort of during this season, end of this season. We kind of made our mind up for that. So I roasted out, Selke out, Torres out, Nutson out, all backups. Nutson for decent money, at least. Um, the rest of them weren't really going to make it. Nutson wasn't going to make it either. Um, but we at least got decent money. Reese James, good money for him. He's out the villa. Uh, Jovic, double our money. He did bits for us, but not enough to stay. Um, and yeah, I, I couldn't decide on midfielders. So we had three midfielders to choose from. Victor, I really liked more of an attacking player, good finishing, good physicals. Couldn't really get him working the way I wanted to. We ended up selling him really cheaply, but we brought him really cheaply as well, so that wasn't too bad. Magina, again, another cheap pickup. I think three million, so we made a decent profit on him. Yeah, him and Victor, very similar. Different kinds of players were very similar in terms of ability levels and where they fit into the team squad. Didn't know what I was doing really so i was kind of confused and then diego suarez as well a free transfer probably could have kept him probably the best of the three but i didn't want another foreign player in there if i didn't have to so i made my mind up i was going to sell them and we'd look around now the good thing is i got forward and in, so i thought okay i can sell these and look for a young backup and that's when i unearthed chad joseph couldn't land him in the transfer window got him in january instead but overall, I think it's an upgrade. And honestly, like for what? 30 million there? We almost paid for Joseph getting rid of those three guys. And I think we only paid like 4 million for those guys. So 10 million plus three players that would be good, not great, get us a young English player that could be great and is currently good. So. We lost a bit of depth, but we gained something we wanted out of it. So it's not a bad trade-off when I view it in that kind of lens. A um, couple of youngsters not going to make it. Bunch of people out on loan as well. Dumped a bunch of players. And at this stage, with Joseph sort of in, we decide, okay, we know, you know, we know that Joseph's coming in. Fowler's not going to be about much longer. The bids were coming in. I had to get rid of him. So he has out Bayern Munich for big money. Um, really big money. He was kind of, him and Suarez flattered when you looked at their stats and attributes. But the way they played, some of the balls they didn't chase, some of the passing options they made, some of the runs they made, I just didn't like their style at all. Um, yeah, so big profit on that. Made some money. I still think we improved. And Matty Aperian as well. Donna rumor in. We didn't really need him. He had some good youngsters we developed over the season. So he could leave. Again, some more defenders out. Some backup defenders and go and strikers. Sorry, here. People like Yakin says. Decent, but not great. Gaiola came up big over the season in parts. But we ended up shipping him out to Villa. Uh, and then a bunch of youngsters that just didn't make it. So... 
a lot of young players, Perrin and Fala from the first team, and then some rotation options in Suarez, Magina, Victor, Jovic, and James Knutson. And also our backup keeper. So not a big price for him, but again, I think I was more interested in just getting him out and getting one of the young goalkeepers with more potential in instead. So yeah, Torres, another one of those rotation midfielders that never quite made it. Selkie was depth, but really a lot of youngsters out, I think, is the main thing. So we lost a bit of money, mainly because we went big in English at the end. We went opportunistic on the transfer list to get Foden, and we broke the bank, really, and set new records for Donnarumma. So, yeah, I'm pleased. I'm pleased. The fact that those deals there cost us, what, like 61 and 51... 112, 114, so 204 million out of 236, maybe. Madness, madness. The amount of players we got in for cheap, but we broke the bank with those four. We already had Enrique in as a first team player off the bench, Zafarovic as a bit of a first team player. Zizekis is a bit of a rotation young player as well. So, really, benching up, we had Enrique and Zafarovic at the back. We had Don Rumor in goals. We had Joseph Foden and Zazikis in midfield. And we had Herbert up top. A lot of good quality players coming into the first team squad. And again, you know, yes, Don Rumor is world class. So that bypasses the need for British. Enrique's going to be world class. Zafarovic, Zazikis, more backups, more rotation. Fills a need for now, but maybe they don't make it long-term. And then Foden, Joseph, Herbert, the three Englishmen to come into the team. So we're, we're improving that spine, and we're kind of keeping it 58% British or above, hopefully. So that's the idea there. That's the idea behind some of those transfers. We jump in now to the, uh, to the Cups, as they were. You can see... We lost to Arsenal in the Community Shield. We kind of tried for that, but then barely. Too much pace, too much power. Couldn't get uh, couldn't get the win there. So that's Cup Cup competition one. Lost something that we'd have to get at a later date to uh, complete winning every trophy within this save. Freiburg, decent team. Roche late on after Cooler giving us the lead, though. We sealed the Super Cup. That's now in the cabinet. That box is ticked off. Uh, the World Club Cup dominated Alali. Really good game. Um, they had chances to. It was an open game, but we were very critical. And then we just put uh, Boca Juniors to the sword. Absolutely decimated them. And again, another tick in the competition's column ticked off. Gotsev with an early goal gets us away from Burnley. Gaiola's early goal. Gets us a win over West Ham. Um, a late goal after Goler opens up. Fabio Silva gets one back over Chelsea. Sarah with the injury time winner. In the semi-finals, Kula decimates. Then Herbert decimates and puts Middlesbrough out. And in the final, good win over Liverpool, but a very, very tight game. Um, again, finals, we don't play our best football in finals. Teams may be more defensive or a little bit more combative, compact or whatever it might be. But we really don't do well in those finals. And some away games as well. We fall into the same traps. So there was that. FA Cup, big win. So Sikis early on there. The B team coming up big. Phil Foden took some time to settle, but we got him playing well. And these were some of the games where he started coming into it sort of midpoint of the year and later. Um, but yeah, good win over Birmingham there. A decent win over Bournemouth. Left it late. They got a goal back. Lewis Freud had to come up big towards the end of the game. He threw bodies forward. A seven men up top formation just came out big in uh, numerous games this season. And of course, throughout the entire save. An early goal for Sandro gets us through. And then... We get a goal before halftime. Then they're on top second half. They get a goal through Duval. A change down 
from attacking to more positive, and then down to cautious. And then I'm getting ready to go all at attack when they counter-attack us anyway. Dilrosan with another late goal. Boy scores late goals. We know this. He did it all the time against us. Um, and then I go all out attack for the last few minutes. Can't claw it back. Knocked out. We can't defend our crown in the FA Cup. Let's just free up these. And then head to the Champions League. Lazio, decent win. They came back, but they got a man sent off, so we got out of it. Schalke, big win. Muratovic and Kula with a pair each there. Muratovic with a pair, Kula with a goal against Atleti. Then Atleti, now they did well against us and just shut things down. Lazio, we got a win. Got served with a goal. Foden coming up big again towards that sort of midpoint of the season. Sort of a few months into the season, he's starting to settle. Takes some time, but he gets there. And then a weird own goal to finish off the group. Luckily, we topped the group, but not really a nice way to end it. Sporting, Muratovic with a hat-trick. Lewis Fry gets one as well. And then we just clean up at home. We know away from home, we did our job. Juventus at home, we give up a late away goal. They win 3-0, we're out. But I had confidence. Kula played well enough. First half, we dominated again. Phil Foden coming up big at home. Kind of shut down the team. Kind of, you know, locked them into position. Defensive possession. You know, contain with a little bit of aggression up front in the midfield to try and win the ball back. But really, deny Juventus the opportunity to win 3-0 and put us out in the way goals. Opened up a little bit later, made some subs, changed up the game. Herbert with a goal. Cooler with the 90th minute. Absolutely fantastic scenes. Uh, and then Arsenal, away from home, just didn't enjoy this game. The boys didn't want to play. We didn't do well. They had the early game. We managed to get a goal before halftime. That was all that was really happening in the game. Um, lots of pressure from them, but they couldn't make it tell. Lots of weird passes. Sort of Strange choices, effort, but not in the right areas from our players. Poor decisions. I mean, just weirdness. But we got the away goal. We got out the game. We closed it out. That was the main thing. And then, again, very similar. Second half of the game uh, in the first leg and in this entire second leg of the semifinal. We just didn't play well. We didn't want to be there. We didn't play well. Arsenal probably deserved more of it than we did. But we were professional. We got the job done. You like to see it. You like to see us win when we don't play well. And over the two legs, we just about did enough to squeeze through. And then Kula, early goal against Liverpool. And then the team decided to stop playing. And Liverpool had the majority of the game. Um, there weren't very many highlights. I think six or seven at most. Not a very good game. We got the early goal. The rest of it didn't really matter. We defended our crown, but it wasn't really much to watch. Um, yeah, kind of sucked from that point of view. But I didn't mind. I didn't really mind. In the league, got off to a really good start. As you can see here, Kula scores, then Mura scores, Mura scores. Kula comes back with a hat trick. Franco scores, Fry gets sent off, but it doesn't ruin us. Fall up. Some of the last goals he scores for the club right there. And then we don't score for the first time. But we're still like seven games with clean sheets at this point, including Man City away. So I'm okay with it. Then at home against Burnley, we do it again. And I'm not sure where we are. And morale takes a bit of a hit for some reason. A uh, few players look out of it. They don't really seem ready to compete. So we rotate a little bit. You know, we get a good result against Chelsea. We rotate out again and get a good result against Watford. But again, we go ahead, get a bit lucky with the own goal, and then we seem to collapse sort of towards the end of the first half, start the second half, we suddenly stop playing football. Um, Chelsea was a decent game. But the other three in this run of four, we didn't play well. We didn't really deserve much. And then a, an early own goal from Bravi, Sarah before half time, a little bit against the runner play. 
Uh, again, West Ham probably deserves something up the game. And we're not playing very well. We're not firing on all cylinders. We're trapped in first gear. Um, we look devoid of ideas. There's no creativity. There's no fight in the team whatsoever. So I'm trying to think of ways to get around it. We've got some big games coming up. Man United away. The team playing like this. I didn't want morale to tank. So I dropped my first team to protect their morale. Put some kids in. We got wrecked early. We give away a penalty. Late goal. We weren't at it, but I gave up the points. I knew that we could get those back. But for morale, I didn't want to go to Old Trafford, playing the way we were, knowing we might lose, and then have the first team sort of be unhappy. Um, I didn't think that was a good idea. And like I say, coming in towards this point of the season, you know, we're battling in Europe, we're battling in the Cups, we're at the top end of the league. There's so many games, so many chances. I thought, play the reserves, play the kids, send them to Old Trafford. We played quite well. We got beaten badly, but we played quite well. And then we did the same, basically, at home against Brighton. Bit of a reserve team. Lewis Fry with the early goal. Not too much, but we're starting to play a little bit better. Play a first, you know, a few first-teamers away to Villa. Fordham with an early goal. He starts coming in, getting some goals. Cooler with a goal. Then we controlled it. Then morale starting to look a little bit better. Then Muratovic, poor first half, shouted at them. Within like 15 seconds, Muratovic has scored. But again, Stoker difficult to break down. Morale was not great at that point either. We're slowly starting to come back down. And then the first team pretty much go to Arsenal, get absolutely blitzed. Um, a good first goal by Fernandez worked it around the edge of the box. Lane opened up, he took the shot, great shot. Um, and Ketia used his pace well to break through the lines, got a good finish there. Uh, and as we're setting up, we're, we're pushing to go more adventurous. We get, you know, we get caught on the counter attack. It's still Russell. Last twenty minutes of the game, we know he's dangerous. And then the other winger that came off the bench, Chan. Six minutes later, we couldn't make changes in between those goals. The game just went too quickly, and it really got away from us. So upset at that, but again, you know, regrouped, got some morale. Go again at home. Again, we played some reserves, some backup players. But at home against Newcastle, we got the only penalty. We did okay. We got that second goal straight away. Cooler was on one. He took control of this game, got us those goals. Second half, Mura, nice goal from him. Laksasi, the only goal the French defensive mid ever scored for us. And we got out of the game with a morale boost, which was badly needed. Poor game against Leicester, but again, kind of trending upwards. Four strikers score against Liverpool, trending upwards. Derby away, trending upwards, although, you know, we do give them a couple of goals. Away to Spurs, I mean, they put nine men in the box, they counterattack towards the end, they stole a win off us, but we weren't really good enough for that one. Um, and again, it was mainly reserves in that because we had other games to deal with first team comes back in fully against Wolves a good game to target Muratovic hits four Sarah Foden a campo brilliant there Bournemouth were off and running early Muratovic wants this game um, but Kula gets us off to a good start Muratovic then takes over gets his goal controls the game we make a sub late on bring on Derek Herbert all three strikers end up scoring love to see that and then Man City forward and against his old club after Maratovic scored a penalty. We were in control of the game, but we couldn't break them down. We finally got there. And then this game, again, we couldn't break down Chelsea. Kula gets a goal. Maratovic gets a goal. Foden gets a goal. Douglas with a weird own goal. Um, the young left back there did okay, but not great. And Mason Mount. A lovely run into the box from Mount. He kind of ripped us apart towards the end. But we held on, and morale's starting to build again, bit by bit. Herbert then comes in big for us. Cooler off the bench. At home to uh, Everton, some big, big wins and goal scorers coming in there. And then it falls apart again. Uh, West Ham 
kind of outplayed us. We didn't want it. They get the goal. Herbert gets us one back, but we never looked like winning. And then the Brighton game. I mean, we got a weird own goal that, um, you know, bit of luck there. Then we lose a man. And right gets sent off. So then they score with Joe Magina, our former player. Then knockout scores. Then Rui Gomez scores. And then Kula scores. And we're thinking, okay, 10 men, we're still controlling the game, we're going to win. Then Fernandez makes up for his early mistake, he gets the equalizer. Then immediately, pretty much, Lewis Frey puts us back ahead, and I think, okay, the boys really want this. And then tired legs, 10 men, really came into play. Other Kinley is very quick. He is very dangerous. He came off the bench, did big things. He's ended up at Chelsea. Uh, he might be moving on from there, but... Yeah, we couldn't handle his pace in that moment. 94th minute equaliser. Nil-nil away to Huddersfield. We didn't learn from last season, so we rotated again. Um, but then Kula, Muratovic come up big. Gotsev steals a win with a, a nice goal against Stork, a driven left foot shot into the top corner. Pretty much a nothing game, but we, you know, we always like to win them. Kula comes up big again. Joseph and Herbert with the goals after Diego Costa with our reserve team basically going to Burnley and coming back from behind. Not letting them hold on to the lead for long, controlling the game and winning it late on. Love to see that. Uh, the kids at Newcastle, nil-nil draw. We don't mind that. Herbert repays Man United for uh, the loss we suffered against them with a nice big win there. Bit of a statement of intent. Roche and Joseph, the B team overcoming Huddersfield. Uh, for the second time in a few games because that got pushed back quite late into the season. And then again, Gotsev with a B team, Luther Graf with a goal, and then Herbert late on again, making sure we get some points. So absolutely fantastic. We win the league by 10 points. Okay, as I was saying, we win the league by 10 points. It's the second win in a row. And it's unbelievable really to control the league from start to finish united had some good players they really had some good players they put goals past people this year where we kind of didn't you know in the previous year we were scoring more goals and this year it was more about our defensive performance of course you know bringing in donna Ruma really kind of helps with that uh, we get a world-class keeper at the back so yeah, when you do that kind of thing, you're likely to get some success out of it. But we kind of dominated there. Like I said, we won the Champions League. You know, we won pretty much every trophy. Um, the only one that's escaped us at the end of Season 7 would be the um, the Community Shield. That's the only thing we have yet to win in this save as of this point. So, there's one more season to go. We'll get around to that in the next video. Um, but I'm really happy with what we did in this season and where we kind of got things. Because like I say, we um, we sold some players, we bought some great players. We really started to go back more British again. We solved the midfield congestion that we had. Donnarumma ended up being a big pickup for us, and Fordham was a stroke of good fortune there. I didn't expect him on the transfer list, but when he does appear there, I just couldn't resist. Some weird losses, you know, but the three away losses. It's Man United, Arsenal, Tottenham away from home. Like, that's not bad for three losses in a season. The draws are a bit more hit and miss. Man City away is good. Burnley at home, that's really bad. West Ham, Brighton away, probably we got out of those. Huddersfield away, not really great. Newcastle away, not really great. I mean... But it is what it is. It's a decent season with a good team that needs just one or two ingredients to put it right over the top. We'll see those in Season 8. I'll see you then. Until then, take care of yourselves. I'll see you soon, guys.